the last conclusion I have on, or the last observation I have on this is really the uh, different mindset that Western investors and Eastern investors have uh, regarding gold. Uh, the gold, from an Eastern perspective, uh, my parents, for example, who grew up in, uh, my dad grew up in mainland China, uh, fled communist China to the United States, went back to Hong Kong to find a wife, met my mom, they came over here, and then I was born a year later uh, in 1957. And uh, one of the things I noticed very early on around my mom's wrist uh, was that she always wore a 24 karat gold chain, and around that chain had a bunch of two and a half and five dollar gold pieces. And I always thought, you know, this is, uh, my mom's a woman, women uh, uh, like to wear jewelry, and, uh, and this is just what my mom did. But later on, I found out that uh, that was a gift from her father-in-law uh, when they got married. And uh, it wasn't necessarily that my father-in-law uh, really loved my mom, although I, I assume that he did. Uh, it was really that in a, the uh, Chinese mentality, uh, the Chinese, uh, particularly my parents and, and her father-in-law, lived through the fall of the imperial China uh, the rise of uh, several different governments that rose and fell, and then uh, a complete radical change with the rise of Mao Zedong and the communist takeover in 1949. And so they see tremendous instability in governments, and, and they grow up with an inherent distrust. And uh, all that during that time, you had the same thing in the banking system. So you could put money in a bank, but that money could disappear overnight. And uh, so my, uh, that generation of Chinese grew up uh, wanting a portion of their assets in something tangible and portable so that if a revolution came and you ran out of your house, you would have enough money around your wrist to keep your family fed for the next year. And it's that mentality that I grew up uh, with gold around our house. And, uh, and as my uh, parents uh, made more money, uh, they, uh, uh, they diversified uh, their money into uh, stock market savings because they trusted American banks more than they did uh, their ch uh, Chinese banks when they grew up. But they also bought a lot of gold uh, over, over time. And so uh, the Asian mentality treasures the physical gold. But uh, here in the West, uh, there's a, a core of investors uh, that has been buying uh, gold bullion, both eagles and um, buffaloes from the mint for a really long time. Uh, that really values physical gold. But in the last decade, uh, particularly the last five years, there's been a growth of the electronic derivatives of gold. Um, uh, exchange traded <laughs> funds, uh, uh, the um, dramatic interest in uh, short, uh, short selling of gold, as well as futures contracts of gold. And uh, these electronic proxies, uh, the gold investor actually doesn't own the physical gold, but they benefit if the gold prices go up or down. And so it's easier to trade, uh, but if, uh, if the country ever uh, uh, went into a financial crisis, th their uh, certificates would not be exchangeable for physical gold, and you couldn't run away from your house with that th certificate and hope to trade that in at uh, the nearest grocery store uh, for groceries. And uh, so that uh, is a, a very different mentality, and why that's important today is as American and European investors, generally the big institutions, as they get less interested in gold, um, the institutions that hold that gold uh, don't see a demand for it, so they start selling it. And the people who are buying it are in Asia. And given the mentality I just explained to you about how Asians view gold, once uh, a Chinese family owns that gold, they want to pass it down to their children, and their children want to pass it down to their children. And so when gold demand rebounds worldwide, which is very strong worldwide, uh, but uh, just weaker here in the US and Europe, when European and American demand starts to go up, there's going to be a, a shortage of gold because the Asians aren't going to be willing to sell it. And because the gold prices right now are right about the break-even point of mining gold, a lot of gold mines aren't producing it. And so there's going to be a, a period of time where I believe demand is going to outstrip uh, supply for a while. 
So that's how these international uh, economic dynamics as well as these cultural dynamics can really influence uh, you know, people's view on uh, precious metals, particularly gold. Thank you.